9 truths you must know before you'll be married there are few people who really know what they're getting into when it comes to getting married we all have an idea of what marriage is all about we have hopes dreams and expectations of what it will look like we watch movies tv shows and even observe marriages in the world around us to try to get a glimpse of this thing we call holy matrimony but we don't really know until we are there, do we? In this video, we will be sharing with you 9 truths you must know before you will be married. If you are new here, consider subscribing because we will bring to you daily the secrets of success and happiness from great people and good books. Number 1. Your past will come back to haunt you Get your crap together before you get married because your past will come back to haunt you. Many people think once they got married, their porn problem will go away because they will be having sex more often. Hmm, is that true? Ask people like that today if it really goes away. Instead, it wrecked their marriage. If you have issues plaguing you, then spend the time you have now proud to ever getting married to heal and grow yourself. The amount of conflict and grief you save yourself will be worth the investment. Spend time now getting into counseling, read personal growth books or choosing healthier friends. Not only will you grow with knowledge, wisdom and character but you'll pick healthier people to date and marry too. Number 2. You can't change the other person A good relationship depends on the relationship you have with yourself. You have to love yourself to know how to love others, else fear will crop up too much. Fear that someone will leave you or do something you don't want them to do. You can only change yourself in this regard by having more self-esteem. If you try to change the other person, why were you with them in the first place? For hope that they will change? Oh, that's a good dream. The sad news is, they may never change no matter how you try. The easiest person you can change is you. If you find it so hard to change yourself, how can you hope to survive if you have to change both yourself and someone entirely different from you? Number 3. Marry somebody with similar goals You may be advised in church, marry a Christian. Yes, that is a good advice. But it's more than that. Marry somebody with similar passions and dreams. Now, you may not understand this enough but I will break it down. People are not machines. No two people want exactly the same thing in life. However, if you love foreign missions and your potential spouse hates going overseas, some tension will arise. Synergy is extremely important in a marriage. If your spouse has the same vision as you, they will understand your struggles and support your pursuits. They will encourage your walk. They will be empathetic. This alone is enough for your relationship success. There is much power in two people doing life with the same goals, dreams and passions for life. Number 4. Don't buy wedding day lies. Marriage is all about you. Many couples buy the lie of the wedding day. It is all about me. But marriage is at odds with this mindset. A successful wedding is putting all you get to make that day fantastic. A successful marriage is letting your spouse family know you came from a good background. The wedding day is a day where the spotlight is on you. Marriage has no spotlight. The wedding day is about saying a bunch of words that most couples never take seriously. Marriage is about putting the words into action. The wedding day is joyous and celebratory. Many seasons of marriage are about persevering and not letting go through the storms. Embrace your wedding day, prepare for it, celebrate it but don't make the mistake of believing the lie. After your 20 minutes of fame, the spotlight is gone forever. It is no longer about you. Number 5. Don't look for perfection Soulmates are made, not born. I am not sure where this idea of soulmate originated but it is false. Maintaining a healthy relationship is more about commitment than perfection. Every person on earth has imperfections. 
Many young people keep waiting for something that is not real. I just couldn't marry her because she can't cook. He just wasn't the one. He had this weird twitch when he smiled. But I know my soulmate is still out there. I just have to keep looking. Or you might have just missed him or her. What if God does not want you to find a perfect person, but an imperfect person that will draw you closer to him? What if God desires you to marry a person with flaws to expose yours? What if God wants to teach you the value found in committing to one person forever, not the exhausting pursuit of searching your entire life to find the perfect person? Soulmates are made, not born. Number 6. Love isn't a feeling. It's a series of decisions. Before marriage, you can't really comprehend the strong feelings going anywhere but higher. Then one day, you realize that feelings can't really be trusted because some days you feel you may not even like each other. Feelings come, but feelings also go. They are a compass and sometimes a guide, but they are never to be followed. People change all the time. You have a great feeling for this person. Years of continuously getting crushed under corporate life wheels, marathon after the kids, and drowning in daily housework will make your partner's personality almost unrecognizable. They might become more nervous, less sensitive, more aggressive, or less forgiving. They will definitely not be the same person. And you need to make a new decision of coming to terms with the new version of you and your partner. Otherwise, your life will be unbearable. The test of real love is what you do when you don't feel like loving. Marriage is constantly choosing to love, to give, and to serve because of the commitment you have made. It's choosing the other instead of choosing yourself. That's the very definition of love in its truest form. Number 7. Marriage will intensify your problems, not fix them. Many young people, especially girls, actually believe a marriage will wash away their problems. Far too often, we think by spending enough time with another person, those inconsistencies and flaws will get smoothed out. But once you realize you might have to deal with them forever, it's easy to get cynical, bitter, jaded, and angry. The person you marry at the altar that day will be the same person 40 years from now. So don't delude yourself. Sure, improvement is necessary for any relationship to thrive, but those flaws you are ignoring and think you might change or marriage will somehow fix will be microscopic and intensifies. So if you walk into a marriage thinking little things won't become big things or you don't learn how to compromise and communicate, you may find it difficult to live happily. Number 6. Marriage is a covenant, not a contract. Society today has made the individual's happiness the ultimate value, and so marriage becomes primarily an experience of romantic fulfillment. I'm not by any means advocating people shouldn't get married, as I believe it's still the best route. But it makes little sense these days because the way we view marriage is toxic. Getting married these days is like having a relationship with your internet service provider. As long as you keep providing the internet, I'll keep paying. Far too often, we treat marriage the same, a formal contract based on happiness or some legal benefit. As long as we have sex, the bills are paid, and I'm happy, I'll stay with you. When you view marriage through that lens, it becomes transactional, and when one party isn't paying the bill, game over. If you walk into a marriage treating it like a consumer relationship or make it about what you get out of the relationship, you are doomed from the beginning. It's not about your needs, it's about mutual service and submission to one another's needs. Number 9. Disappointment is inevitable. This one was a hard reality. I am fully aware of my husband's humanity, so no need to expect disappointment. Hmm. True enough, but for some reason, this truth doesn't really hit home until disappointment shows itself. The more deeply you and your partner love each other, the more deeply you are likely to hurt each other. When you allow someone to bury their heart in yours, there is no doubt that one day you will feel an ache. Whether in the form of an unkind word, 
a thoughtless action or a selfish moment, marriage will hurt. But by God's grace, each wound paves the way for grace, forgiveness and restoration. Each wound is a reminder of our need to love better and more deeply. Even godly Christian couples have difficulties. What sets their marriage apart is that they are committed to work through the difficulties. You enjoyed this video, didn't you? We would like to give you another interesting video for you to enjoy next. But before then, our team will be very happy if you can like this video and share it with your friends on social media. If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss other interesting videos like this. Look at your screen now to see two other videos we have picked for you to enjoy next. We love you.